What's going on guys, Will Mitchell here. Today I have a really good video for you. I wanna talk about five misconceptions, five unknown things about the Belize real estate market and five things that make it unique. I really wanna just dive into this because there's a lot of things that people come down here that they think are the same as back home and a lot of there's a lot of similarities, but there are some key differences that you should be aware of that might impact your decision-making process when you're looking at Belize real estate. So. Without further ado, let's go through these five things. The first one I have on my list is that there is no formal MLS. We have this happen every day. We have people inquire about a property or a lot or a condo or a hotel, and they say they've seen it online on some MLS or some real estate site. There is actually no formal MLS. So in the country, there are some sites that do serve as MLS services that list numerous listings, but they're not exactly up to date. They don't have all of the listings that are relevant to the market, so it isn't a true traditional MLS. So basically, it will require more work for your real estate agent to go out, do their uh, research in the market, find out what's currently available, and then provide that information to you guys. But we have so many people that just look online and they say, oh, hey, Will, you know, I was online, I saw this on the MLS, here's the listing reference number. And it's just not the case, it doesn't exactly work like that. But a lot of those services are great um, and they do have some great listings on them. But just to be aware, there is actually no traditional MLS down here. The second thing we have on our list here is that there is no real estate licensing. This is really important to know and really important for you guys. When you're selecting your realtor that you're gonna work with or your real estate agent or broker, make sure you're looking for a reputable company. Make sure you're looking for someone that has been involved in the market for years, that has a track record, uh, that can provide you with you know client referrals, client testimonials, stuff like that because basically all you would need is a work permit to get started in the real estate industry here. There's no formal licensing program like you're probably used to back home. So that's why it's super, super important when you're looking at who your real estate agent is gonna be, make sure that they have a good you know, amount of experience in the market, they know what they're doing, they're working with a reputable company. I mean, obviously we're biased, I'm the regional owner for Remax, but Remax has a code of ethics and standards that we uphold all of our agents and brokers to, and they do a fantastic job doing that. Also access to a global referral network with 140,000 agents worldwide. Uh, Remax is in over 110 countries around the world, and it really is just a higher level of ethical standard and a higher level of standards that the agents and brokers are held to. But really good thing for you guys to know, there is actually no licensing board here. There are some great uh, real estate boards like the Belize National Association of Realtors, which essentially all the members on our team uh, are members of that service, which is great. You know, it's realtors working together to make sure, again, clients are being well taken care of and there's minimal amount of issues in the market. Uh, three, so unlike many other countries in the region, Belize is a full foreign ownership country. It's unrestricted foreign ownership. When you contrast to a lot of the neighboring countries around this region, there is a lot of countries where their legal system is based on Napoleonic civil law, where it's a two-tier ownership structure that you're gonna have to go through some type of domestic corporation, or you're gonna have to structure this in some way where you can own the property. In Belize, Property ownership is fee simple title. Now I'll say there's one caveat to this. We do have a lot of people also, they'll find, you know, Will, I found this amazing deal in a lot. There's also a program where the government incentivizes locals to get their piece of land. So locals can get a piece of land on a 99 year lease, which they can mutate to be a title. But oftentimes you'll find some of those deals that are just too good to be true. They actually are, and it's a leasehold and you'll have to go through the lands department to actually pull a title on that property, which if you're coming from abroad, it can be a very tedious experience. It's not an easy process to go through. And I would definitely recommend looking out for that and make sure that if you're looking at a property, it's got a fee simple title. But that's a huge difference from here to a lot of other countries in the region. And that is happening because we're a British parliamentary democracy. Our legal system is based on the British legal system, which in turn has full foreign ownership down here. So for title insurance, this is a question we get from Americans. We don't really tend to get this from Canadians or people from other countries because in America, titles are not insured by any government body. In Belize, the Belize government insures the title. So if there's ever a title dispute, both parties will be compensated. Uh, essentially, the one party that's gonna keep the property that the dispute is on, they'll hold that property. And the party that 
is uh, not going to hold that property will be compensated fairly by the government with other properties. So it's a great system and it's insured by the government. So you can actually get title insurance down here. I mean, it, it, it's essentially redundant because it's already insured. But if you're really, you know, you know, we're really concerned about it, we need title insurance, you can get it. It's just good to be aware that your title is already insured and it's not necessary. But you know, if you want to double insure, why not? <laughs> Uh, so five, traditional financing. You've probably heard us talk about this in a lot of our videos, guys. <clears throat> bank financing is very hard to come by down here. So domestic banks lend to locals. So as a foreigner coming in here, you can't go down to Atlantic Bank or Belize Bank. Uh, you're gonna need to look for an international bank. One of the banks we've done business with in the past is Key Bank International. Uh, something to be aware of, the rates are gonna be very, very high. Generally, the interest rate's gonna be around 11%. They're gonna look for about 50% down, uh, and it's gonna be a pretty hefty approval process. So overall, we tend to just tell people, look, look for exterior financing sources, look for vendor financing, look for seller financing on the deal. You've seen in a lot of YouTube videos us talk about this. This is a great way to get financing on a property. We tend to steer away from looking just at deals that are a 10-10-10 deal, which you might have heard of as well, which is 10% down, 10% interest on a 10-year amortization. We'll try to negotiate for our clients a longer term amortization with a higher down payment and a lower interest rate. Now, why would we do that? Well, the financing generally will be no prepayment penalties. So when you get that longer amortization schedule, although it might look like you're paying more interest, the reality is there's no prepayment. So you can pay that off whenever you want and you're gonna get a lower monthly payment. So your base minimum is gonna be lower, but at the end of the day, you're gonna be able to pay that off whenever you want. So that's kind of some of what you might wanna look for. We also have helped a lot of people do real estate syndications in this market, and it does create a tremendous opportunity for purchasers right now. It's not a highly leveraged market. So another benefit is when we see a global recession, like the financial crash of 2008, 2009, we did not see our real estate values plummet like you saw around the US and around the world. The reality is down here, because properties aren't highly leveraged, you don't have the same fluctuation in values, which is a huge benefit. If you're looking for a stable investment, it's a much more stable investment investing in an unleveraged market. The problem is gonna be growing your investment. So if you can find these creative financing outlets or do real estate syndications, that's a great way to, to maneuver the market. And yeah, those are just five things that you might not have known about the Belize real estate market, guys. As, as always, if you have any questions about any of this stuff, shoot me an email, I'm happy to chat. Uh, we got the whole team down here. So Chris, Trevor, Dustin, Mike, all of our other you know agents, brokers around the country of Belize, all the, the great team we have working in our office. So we're here to help you guys. And if you have any questions about the Belize real estate market, please guys, shoot me an email. And as always, we can't wait to see you down here in paradise. Thanks again for watching guys. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We got a lot of amazing content coming. And also check out our book on Amazon, The Investor's Guide to Belize Real Estate. In it we detail all the things you wanna know if you're looking to make an investment in the Belize market. We had experts such as lawyers, bankers, architects, builders, all get involved in the making of this book. It's available on Amazon and Kindle. Aside from that, can't wait to see you guys down here. And don't forget to say how to chew.